Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. Today is our day number 54. I want to start out our day today with a, di with a, di a little bit of digression here. And for those of you who do not still know what digression means, it just means to go off a topic. And when did we cover the word digression itself actually? I'm going to digress. I'm going to make a digression in the, in the word using in the discussion of the word digress itself. On day number three, just type in Keshwani prep dash vocab dash day three and you will learn the word digression which means to just go off a topic. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of digression here. Uh, yesterday on day number 54 or day number 53 rather, on day number 53 rather, we were talking about words which have to do with hatred and the words were uh, caustic, vitriolic and so forth. A caustic comment is comment that really hurts somebody, some, it's really biting, really sarcastic, very cutting. Same thing with vitriolic. Vitriolic, it almost feels like, uh, literally it means to burn uh, as in sulfuric acid. And something that is that caustic, something that is that cutting and that biting, uh, it's, uh, it's so nasty that it actually cuts to the quick, was the expression that I was looking for. I could not think of it yesterday. The expression is cut to the quick. We're going to learn this word today. Okay, and don't don't be hasty. Have some patience. Don't come to conclusion as to why this word, this guy wants to teach me quick. But let's learn it anyway. Quick. Q U I C K. The quick that you know of, obviously, is not the quick that I'm talking about because. For, for, one, for one thing, if it were, I wouldn't be making a fuss about it. And secondly, as I just pointed out, it is a noun. A quick is the sensitive flash under the Under the fingernails. I'm going to show it to you what a quick is. Sometimes when you're cutting your fingernails with a clipper, if you end up cutting it too much, you have your flesh exposed. And you will, you, you know what I'm talking about. When you have, when you cut uh, when you cut off your nails too much, and you have the flesh exposed, that flesh actually, that part of the flesh actually, is very sensitive. A lot of nerves end end up there, and it's very sensitive. And that part of the flesh is called quick. And the expression is cut to the quick. Cut to the quick means it's very hurtful, it's very sarcastic, it's very bitter, it's very caustic, very vitriolic. Cut to the, it cuts to the quick. It is so vitriolic, it is so caustic, it is so biting that it cuts to the quick. That's how, that's, that's how I wanted to finish my sentence. But I couldn't remember yesterday what the expression was. I knew it was cut to the something. There's another expression for those of you who, who are uh, thinking of it right now, which is cut to the chase which is an entirely different thing and I'm not going to go there because it's a very simple expression. We all know what that means. But this is not something that a lot of people know. Cut to the quick, which means very hurtful. So that was the first word we want to learn today and now actually I'm going to start the lesson. And I knew that as soon as I finished taping the thing, it will come to me and that's exactly what happened. As soon as I closed the video, as soon as I closed the camera, it came to me. The first word we want to learn today is provincial. Adjective. And notice the pronunciation. I, I do not go around saying pro, it's not P R O, that's how even though it's, that's how it's spelled, but it's not provincial, it's provincial. Pro. Provincial. What does it mean? It has two meanings. It has a literal meaning. It has a literal meaning, which uh, which uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. It means having to do with provinces. Having 
to do with having to do with or or coming from provinces. Now before I give you the metaphorical meaning, this person this is the literal meaning obviously. Before I give you the metaphorical meaning, let me give you a little etymology of the word. And if you do not know what etymology means, I believe we have covered that word also, etymology. Oh, right here, on day number 8. Again, one more time, if you want to learn about etymology in a little bit more detail with the correct pronunciation and all that, just type in Keshwani Prep dash vocab dash day 8 and you will see the word etymology, which means the history of the word. Let me give you a little bit of a history, the background, the etymology of the word provincial before I give you the metaphorical meaning. Back in the old days, this has to do with obviously history and so forth, back in the old days when there used to be kingdoms and there used to be center of powers and so forth, like for example Rome or Athens or whatever it is, uh, uh, the, the power, the center of power, that's where they ran their kingdom from and the people who lived in the center, the people who lived in the in the epicenter of the power, they looked down on, on their subjects around in the, in the outside provinces. So they had this kingdom spread far apart, which they referred to as their provinces, and then they lived themselves, the rulers themselves lived in the center. And they referred to people from those provinces as provincial, having to do with provinces, coming from provinces. And therefore, they looked down on them as people who were not as sophisticated as, as them. You know, we live in the center, we are sophisticated, we are suave, we are educated, you know, these are just peasants living in the provinces. Peasants living in the provinces were referred to as provincial, which has come to mean, which has come to mean, therefore the word provincial has come to mean, not sophisticated, not sophisticated not fashionable it has also come to mean narrow-minded it is ironic that in their narrow-mindedness of the in, in the narrow-mindedness of the, in the narrow-mindedness of the people living in the center of the power they describe these other people as narrow-minded because they themselves were being narrow-minded, because they somehow thought that they were somehow better than the other the people living in the provinces, because they were the rulers. It also means somebody who has poor manners. Somebody who has limited perspective. Somebody who has limited perspective, limited outlook. Somebody who is narrow-minded, somebody who has limited perspective, narrow, limited outlook, somebody who is narrow-minded, somebody who has poor manners, somebody who is not as sophisticated as people in this, living in the city, not, not as uh, fashionable as people living in the urban areas, they are referred to as provincial, both literally and now metaphorically that's what it means. Not sophisticated, not refined, not fashionable, narrow-minded, having limited perspective, having limited outlook. Let's learn the opposite of it, the antonym of it, which has to do with these, these, these are the words, of course languages do not just fall from the sky, they have life of their own. And the languages of a uh, language of any particular, uh, any, any particular language that you pick, uh, it's not just a language in itself, it, it, it actually comes from the culture, it, 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 it is a portrayal, it's a manifestation of the cultural biases. And therefore the next word that we're going to learn, which has to do with the city, which means Literally, it means having to do with city, but metaphorically, it has come to mean very sophisticated. And the word is urbane. Let's learn it. Let's put it on the blackboard. I need the room. I'm going to erase all of this thing because I need the room. Urbane. A 
But of course, if you are being, you're not from the provinces, you're not from the outside, you're not those peasants, you live in the city, you, you, you're sophisticated, obviously. You, you, you are cosmopolitan, you are very broad-minded, just by the virtue of the fact that you live in a city. And those, that's, that's, those are the prejudices that I'm talking about right now. It just means having, having refined manners. As opposed to those peasants, of course, who would not have refined manners. That's, that's, hence the provincial, you are urban. Showing proper etiquette. Somebody who has proper etiquette, somebody who has very refined manner, somebody who is elegant, somebody who is cultured, Somebody who is somebody who is suave. The word is suave. S U S U A V E. Suave. Somebody who is suave. Somebody who is elegant. Somebody who is refined, well mannered, cultured, having proper etiquette is said to be urbane, urbane as opposed to provincial. There's one more, let's learn one more word, which also has to do with having to do with city, and therefore with somebody who is, who, who is, who is from the city is uh, somehow considered to be more, more elegant, more refined, more well-mannered, uh, more sophisticated, if you will. And the next word that we can learn, has to do with that part also, it has to do with the city. I need the room, so I need to raise it, or erase this one. The word was urbane. Make sure you know how to pronounce it. Urbane. It's not urban, it's urbane. Having refined manners, showing proper etiquettes, being elegant, being cultured, being suave. I do not know why I had the urge to say it like that. Don't ask me that. But that's how it was back in the old days. People in the in the city always looked down on the people uh, on the in the countryside because people in the countryside tended to be illiterate peasants. Obviously, none of that applies today. The next word we want to learn today is cosmopolitan. Cause, no, all, a, ten. Cosmopolitan. It's an adjective. It just means uh, someone who is, now here we're defi defining a person. We do, we just, we're giving a description of a person as being cosmopolitan. And if you're cosmopolitan, then you are someone who is someone who, who is at ease in all parts of the world. And if you are at ease at all parts of the world, which means you're very sophisticated, you're very cultured, you're very broad-minded, you're cosmopolitan. You're not provincial. Having varied interest, having broad interest, and therefore is more sophisticated. Somebody who has varied interest is more sophisticated, they're broad-minded, they're exposed to different ideas, they are exposed to different cultures, they are exposed to different way of lives, different people, and uh, they don't feel uncomfortable if uh, no matter what part of the world they are in, and thus such a person is called a cosmopolitan person, a very sophisticated person, a very suave person, very refined person. That was the end of today. I will see you tomorrow on day number 55. To learn some more words, in the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, 
for personal private tutoring through internet via Skype or in person for SAT, GRE, GMAT or TOEFL. You go to any of these website addresses that you see there and you can send me an email. Or you can go to simply you can simply go to kishwaniprep.com and send me an email from there. Okay. Thanks.